I left my Apple Watch charger back in New York before I came here to LA, which feels really weird because I don't have something on my wrist like alerting me about me standing or my texts or whatever. And I'm someone who actually likes to be alerted of those things. Like I'm not someone who's like, oh my God, unplugged, yay. Like, no, I don't give a shit. Like you can be, you can be quiet and like whatever. But I actually, I, I'm kind of going crazy. Not actually, but I mean just a little bit. Um, anyway, I'm leaving LA. Oh God, this is really backlit. Um, I'm leaving LA and going back to New York. I will be back in LA end of the month. So um, I'm, I tried to get up early today so I could be like back on EST. Um, but as you all may have seen in my stories on Twitter, etc., Venus is now in Capricorn. Venus is in Capricorn. Sorry, a lot going on here. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about, let's just do this angle. I feel like lifting my arms up, it just feels like a nice stretch. Um, Venus in Capricorn because um, it's a placement that does not have dignity. So planets in signs can either have dignity nothing or debility. So Venus is exalted in Pisces, meaning that it's lifted up royally, basically. It does very, very well. It functions very beautifully there. Venus is at home in Taurus and Libra, meaning it rules those signs, so it's very comfortable there to be very constructive. And Venus is therefore fallen in Virgo, the opposite sign of Pisces, meaning that it tends to have a disadvantage there. And it is in its antithesis in Aries and Scorpio, meaning it's kind of like being in a foreign country. Um, Definitely being in domicile in its home sign or exalted is like the best functional place. I don't give a shit if you have that or not in your chart, if you have de debility, whatever. It's not a character judgment. It's not like I, that we all are dealt an uneven hand in different ways in our chart. So I, I don't get triggered or whatever, like speaking about these things. Uh, but if you want to go to an astrologer who's like, every placement is equally beautiful, easy. No, that, no. Um, anyway, um, with Venus and Capricorn, it is not in its dignity or its debility, basically. It has no essential dignity there, um, which means that it's a little bit has it has pros and cons. So if Venus is value, harmony, aesthetics, things going harmoniously, what we value, having it in Capricorn, which is a Saturn ruled sign, and Saturn being a planet of structure and of seriousness, shows that we're valuing seriousness, we're valuing long-term, delayed gratification, we're valuing priorities for the future, and suddenly we're more into like saving, investing, prioritizing what the long-term returns will be, rather than the impulsivity of Venus and Sag. Because I feel like with Venus and Sag, I mean, I myself, in a very good way, that's kind of of counter to my nature was like suddenly oh my god let's just fucking do it like several things in my life I felt the clock was ticking I mean for me as a very Saturn person I feel like the clock is always ticking you all know that's the main thing with me is this like very much time obsessed quality I mean even I mean people think it has to do with like youth and beauty necessarily but for me I was even like a kid and I was always 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 feeling urgent and rushed and feeling like I was out of time or I was late like always 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 so it's just a very um it's an interesting quality with me but um with Venus and Sag in a good way it motivated me to just like get up I mean I'm never on my ass waiting but it made me like extreme motivate excitement towards things that I want now with Venus and Capricorn it's a little bit more like okay, what is the long-term priority? What do I value in the distant future? And what can I do now to preserve that? So it's much less immediate impulsive and much more long-term delayed gratification and withholding like satisfaction right now to have it later. Um, I know uh, just the way that I'm setting up my schedule over the next few weeks is very much like grind now while everyone is celebrating the holidays. Like I don't celebrate the whole, I don't know, I don't, I know, I, I, I don't, I'm, I don't celebrate Christmas. I mean, my, half my family is Jewish. I'm not going to go home for eight days and like that kind of thing. So, I mean, in my heart, whatever, uh, happy, uh, happy Hanukkah. Um, but I know like I'm actually going to be like specifically with my friends who are also, we don't celebrate holidays. We're like specifically working on things that will be very long-term important for me, my company, everything I'm doing during the holidays specifically. Um, Venus and Capricorn is not really going to make any challenging aspects in the sky. There's not really anything challenging in cardinal signs. It will cross Pluto at the very end of December, and that is the one challenging time. So Venus and Capricorn itself is valuing the long-term, valuing the serious, valuing um, what will take you up the ladder with a pretty train on your dress. Because like Venus is cute, um, but Capricorn is very much climbing the ladder. It's climbing the, the mountain, um, and not in a bad way. I mean, I love Capricorn placements because we understand that uh, in many ways, everything in the world is an energetic transaction. It doesn't mean you have to use or manipulate people. I think that Capricorn placements can get a bad rap because they're very overt with like tit for tat. 
I don't think that's bad at all. I think that ignoring energetic exchange in the world leads to like codependence and manipulation. I would rather just be like, yo, I paid for this. Can you pay for that? Like, that's very even. Like my friend's letting me stay in her house here in LA. She had to go to New York. I'm letting her stay there. Like there was no question. It was like tit for tat. Like, in fact, I mean, with her staying in my apartment and me, like it's, a, I, I would say I energetically even owe her because it's, I stayed here for almost a week versus she's there for only two nights. Um, so things like that, where Venus and Capricorn is very, um, values the energetic exchange of transactions and values, um, being values climbing the ladder and like what that can bring um so you might find that you're prioritizing things that will get you either socially monetarily business-wise ahead i don't think that's bad i think if you're overt about it and like i get this out of the situation then like fucking great like it's not bad to have a strategy i think it's stupid to be like oh i only do things the kindness of my heart like the kindness of your heart is a little bit strange like like no just no there's motivation to like survival and survival translates into like all different things um venus and capricorn at the end of the month will conjoin pluto pluto is the planet of intensity of transformation of crisis so end of the month has like a toxic relationship energy it doesn't mean if you're in a relationship it's going to be toxic but like venus pluto is the depths of obsession and of value so it could be really hot it could also be overly intense and obsessive. Could be really paranoid. So it might be like where people are accusing people of things and you're like, why would you think this? I have a bug bite on my face. I There's ants in this house and I was bitten by an ant. I don't really care. Um, it's like itchy. Um, so Venus Pluto, the end of the month could mean obsession. I'm going to be doing some things at the end of the month that I want to be extremely focused and extremely obsessed with. So I'm okay with Venus Pluto at the end of the month. However, if you're in a committed relationship or like talking to someone, make sure that you're like grounded and not running in circles mentally or not assuming things mentally without basis. Cause Venus Pluto is a recipe for like love bombing and also paranoia where it's, you're going really intensely very quickly and it could end up scaring the other person or yourself, etc. So it's not bad but um pluto is a neutral to negative energy i'd say like pluto is not going to be inherently like super easy um but before that venus is not really making any overtly challenging aspects that i can think of off the top of my head that i planned out expecting um so it's a pretty neutral transit that values long-term investing values quality over quantity capricorn is like with my venus videos and venus and capricorn i talked about valuing quality investment fashion pieces they're not obsessed with labels but they're the kind of person that will have like a really killer leather jacket that's like a statement piece and they're not going to settle for like fashion nova h&m leather jacket they're going to go for like the vintage like very high quality piece um venus and capricorn is old money aesthetic old money aesthetic like i i as a capricorn rising i'm not super old money i'm very like i don't know i love logos and tacky shit and rhinestones but i do think that over the next few weeks we'll see like a return to like a little bit of this mature holiday style. Uh, I don't even know what that means, but like that came out. Um, a, a mature old money aesthetic, so to speak, uh, that will be prominent and you might see people just being like more willingly conservative, like, um, I don't know, house made in core, like that kind of thing. Um, but overall, I mean, with Mercury and Venus and Capricorn, things will be drier uh, in terms of humor and in terms of interactions, things will be more blunt, but very, uh, I'd say, more mindful and conscientious than Venus, Mercury, and Sag. It's much more mindful, conscientious, and direct. Um, and if you have anything that you're dealing with creatively over the next few weeks, know that it's probably going to be a more serious decision-making process rather than something more like, like the Venus and Mercury and Sag was very much like, oh, stay up till 2 a.m. with a canvas, like painting, just wild, you know, that kind of artist energy. This is like, no, get up, do your thing, get into like your studio at like 11 a.m., leave by six, go to Pilates, like that kind of energy. Um, I, by the way, need to go on again on my flight, so we're gonna have to hightail this out. I don't know what time it is because I don't have my Apple Watch, like I said. Um, I'm a little disoriented. It's just been kind of a day already. Um, so I'm excited for Venus and Cap. It's not a bad energy by any means. It's something to be scared of, but it is something to be mindful of when you're prioritizing your time. Um, definitely plan for structure and plan for the long term because that will be more assisted. And the, like I've said, the new moon, October 23rd, or October, the new moon, December 23rd, the Capricorn new moon is a great time to start something business oriented. This is a beautiful new moon. I highly would recommend looking into it. So yeah, hope that this helps. Um, I'm gonna head out to LAX so I can get going.
returned in New York. Um, my friend Danny, I was in her house in LA and now she she's not here right now, but she was staying in my place here for the past few days um, because there's some events in New York. So we just like literally traded, we traded homes. Um, anyway, I have a huge pile of boxes from things that came in. I'm gonna open these tomorrow because I don't wanna deal with them right now. Um, the one box I do wanna open is this case. This is a case and I've needed a phone case for forever because I don't have a case on my phone right now. It's just this. Oh, and I can't find the case to my AirPods. I think it fell out of my pocket at LAX. So I had to go and get these, but I'm kind of into it. I forgot how much easier it is to keep track of just like the wire headphones. So I actually don't mind using these at all. I think they're a vibe. Um, and I kind of wanted some anyway. So let me open this case. This is like a, um, it's a case from, <coughs> excuse me, from Etsy. And I, um, I ordered two cases because I couldn't decide. So I think one of them came in. I don't know where the other one is. We're gonna see, is this one gonna be the octopus one? Or, I know that sounds weird, but there's an octopus one, and then there's one that's like not octopus. Okay, there, it comes with a little necklace. Looks like they gave me a necklace. Oh, and there's, oh shit, there's like this, there's this stuff in it. I don't want this to get everywhere. Okay, there's a little, there's, there's more in here it seems. Hi, my friend. I sent you a free gift. Is you're satisfied with my item? COVID-19. Bro, that's about two years old, the commentary on the delayed ship times. COVID-19. Okay, whatever. Not going to go there right now, but we can go there. Because I, honestly, my Uber driver in LA, we literally, he literally talked about, he was like, what? <laughs> it was just funny because he got into like, we got into fucking from Pizzagate to like vaccine like like comments like it was just funny immediately off the bat i don't know if he just feels comfortable going for that with everyone or if he could just sense that it was probably going to be receptive um because he just went for it he's like have you noticed that like whatever anyway this is uh this case look how cool this is let's put this on together let's do a little moment here um putting it on i'm so here for this this makes it easier to hold this is so cute. Thumbnail. That's so cringe. I'm not gonna do this again. I'm editing. Actually, I edited all of that out because it was super cringe, but. There you go. Now you know there's a thumbnail. I'll somehow work with that. What is the necklace that, there's a little necklace thingy that came with this. Okay, cute. Maybe I'll do I don't know what I would wear this with, but uh, cute, I suppose. Anyway, what, the final note that I'll end on is that I have a big thing where I don't like to waste food. Like literally, if I don't eat food, like it will, I don't care the smallest amount of leftovers, it will be saved. I do not waste food ever. So because I had this leftover from Erwan, I brought this on the plane. I wasn't hungry during the flight. It was like a quick flight. It was only four hours, you know, on the way back. It's like five and a half there before on the way back. So I was like, fine. So I brought the buffalo cauliflower and the raw cinnamon roll with me. I knew I was gonna bring this, but like, we'll heat these up. I'll have these as part of my dinner. So I'm just, that's just what I do. Anyway, I'm gonna head out, going to unpack a little bit and get ready for bed. And uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. He accidentally hit the little record before I could do the, see ya. Actually, look at my suitcase. This was the suitcase. If you watch my videos in Mykonos, if you've been a long time, if you've been here since Mykonos over the summer, I was extorted for this suitcase. I was told to pay 300 euros to get a suitcase because my suitcase broke. I needed a new one. Mykonos has no fucking suitcases. So I was extorted for this and it broke. So good riddance. This is now going to decapitate. Jesus Christ. Okay, there we go. Good night.